This video will guide you in four simple steps on how to know if your fermentation is safe to eat or not. Starting at the top of the checklist and working our way down. Number one, the visual inspection. When you open the jar of your fermented food at the end of its fermentation period, the first thing you're going to take note of is what you see. Do you see any fermentation funk on the jar or on the surface of the food or brine? This could be calm yeast, mold, weird colors, or other abnormalities. Calm yeast is the only acceptable surface funk. It looks something like this. Although it's ugly, it is 100% harmless. For more details about what calm yeast is, watch my calm yeast video in my fermentation funk series. If the equipment was properly cleaned before use, there shouldn't be a mold situation. However, if there is, it's a different situation than harmless calm yeast. Mold can be fuzzy, lumpy, splotchy, and grow in varying colors. For example, black, gray, white, and blue. If the mold growth is significant, like this example, covering large portions of the surface of the fermentation or growing significantly on the jar or lid, the fermentation is not safe to eat. Moderate to significant mold development results in moderate to significant development of mycotoxins released into the food or brine, contaminating it, even if the food is not in direct contact with the mold. That is why the entire fermentation should be discarded and the fermentation does not pass this checklist point. On the other hand, here's an example of a couple of tiny dots of mold that formed on some spice pieces that floated up. This is something I would consider passable since there would not be a significant presence of mycotoxins with such a minuscule development of mold. I quickly and easily just lift it right out with a clean utensil. Fortunately, I caught this right away. If that mold had been allowed to continue to develop for several more days or even another week, that minuscule amount of mold would develop into a significant to moderate problem. So it is possible to save your fermentation if the mold is caught right away at this very minute level like shown in the example. But do allow me to drive the point home. If it develops into moderate to significant amounts of mold, not savable. For more detailed information about mold on fermentations, including when it can and cannot be saved, watch video number two in my fermentation funk series. If the fermentation passes the visual test, you can move on to the checklist item number two, the smell test. Put your nose up to the fermentation and smell it. A healthy fermentation should have a soury sweet smell. A fermentation that has gone bad will have a foul odor, an offensive smell that makes you wanna jerk your nose back right away and you instinctively do not wanna eat it. If the smell is foul like this, throw the fermentation away. It is not safe to eat. Sometimes fermenting cabbage can release a sulfury smell since cabbage is naturally rich in sulfur compounds, but that is not to be confused with an odor that is of rot and a foul stench. So when you put your nose to the jar, if the smell is that soury sweet fermenting smell, and perhaps with a little bit of sulfur scent mixed in if it's sauerkraut, then you can proceed to number three on the checklist the pH test. A pH scale measures acidity and alkalinity. The scale goes from one to 14 with seven being neutral. The lesser the number below seven, the more acidic the subject is. The greater the number above seven, the more alkaline the subject is. An acidic pH below 4.5 kills bad pathogens, including botulism. And in case you're wondering if the good probiotic bacteria that are healthy for our digestive systems and our immune systems are also killed off by the low pH, the good news is they're not. In fact, opposite of bad pathogens, the good probiotics actually thrive in the acidic environment of a fermentation. You'll need either pH paper test strips or a digital pH meter to take the pH reading of the brine. If the paper strips match the acid level of four on the color code, or if the digital reader reads below 4.5, even better if it reads between three and four, the pH signifies a safe fermentation. If the pH reading is above 4.5, do not eat it. It is not safe since anything above 4.5 is a tolerable environment for bad pathogens and the food could make you sick. Only proceed on this checklist if the pH is below 4.5. If so, 
you're now ready to take a taste test, which is number four on the checklist. Take a clean utensil, never double dipping, and pull yourself out a bite to sample. If you have a gag reflex or instinctively wanna spit it out, then do so. Our bodies have those protective gag reflexes built in for a reason. Discard the fermentation if this happens because it means our bodies are detecting something not right. However, if it tastes good and pass the other checklist items, you've got yourself a safe and healthy fermentation and you can dive in. If other tastes come forth that are not particularly pleasing, such as perhaps it's a bit too salty or sour for your liking, or maybe a spice flavor that you don't care for, that does not mean that the fermentation is spoiled or unsafe to eat. Those palate issues are different from something tasting foul or rotten. So put on your discernment cap to be able to decipher between the two if you find yourself not liking the taste of the fermentation. To sum up, for a fermentation to be safe to eat, it must pass all four of these checklist items, sight, smell, pH, and taste. If there's just one failed pass, even when the other three are okay, do not eat the fermentation since one fail sinks the whole ship. I provide this handy four-point checklist as a printer-friendly document, so if you're new to fermenting and a bit unsure with the unveiling of your first fermentation, you can print this checklist out and have it there right with you as you inspect it before you take your first bite. I have a video series called Fermentation Funk, and it addresses the most common of the funk issues such as calm yeast, mold, slimy brine, and a brown layer. If you have any questions regarding those topics, click right here for the complete playlist or find the links in the description. Want to understand what factors safeguard a fermentation? Watch this video right here where I address those safety guidelines so that your fermentation is a successful one. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.